diving into the nature photography scene here in Finland a few years ago, I've noticed that most of the images um, of large predators, such as bears, wolves and wolverines here in Finland, are shot at commercially operated hides. Now that's largely due to the fact that there aren't that many animals to go around in Finland. The populations are quite small and at the same time, um, due to the history of hunting, these animals are very, very timid. So it's almost impossible to even see these animals in the wild um, without a commercially operated hide, let alone to photograph them. As I learned more about this topic, I also found out that there seems to be some controversy around the ethics of these types of operations as well. Being new to this type of photography done from a commercial hide, um, but then finding out that it is pretty popular, especially there are a lot of foreigners coming to Finland to photograph bears and wolves and wolverines from these hides and a lot of Finnish nature photographers also take advantage of these places. So being quite new to this scene, um, I kind of wanted to see for myself what it's all about, so I decided to investigate a little further. And it's been about six months now since I made my first visit to a commercial hide. That was in May, and then I made a couple of other visits during the summer, and then now also in September. And as I posted about these adventures on my social media channels, um, I got a lot of questions and people wanted to learn more. So that's what this video is all about. On this video, however, I am not going to dive into the ethics of these types of operations. That is such a wide topic that that's probably going to require a whole video just ded dedicated to that. Um, on the other hand, um, I will say that there are several of these types of operators in Finland. And obviously there's a lot of variety in how things are done. So on this video, I'm just going to take you with me on this September adventure where I spent three nights at one location and two nights at another hide location in Eastern Finland. Um, I'm gonna just show you a look behind the scenes and hopefully this will be sort of an ultimate guide to um, commercial wildlife hide photography in Finland. Um, after which you'd know how to dress, where to go, how to get there, what to pack, um, camera gear, locations, um, all of that stuff. So yeah, Hop along, let's go! These hide operations are located in eastern Finland, far from any residential areas, right at the border of Russia. You will need a car to get there, there is no public transportation. Once you reach your chosen service provider's base camp, there are various ways of getting to the actual hide. In some places you can drive pretty close to the hides, here we walk. It's about a kilometer to reach our hides and we all walk as a group at a certain time of day. The animals roam freely in this area, so there's safety in numbers. That's why we go to the hides together and once we close the door behind us to the hide, we're not allowed to leave until the next morning at a set time. The hides are usually quite small, so you'll fit in better if you bring less stuff with you. <laughs> Once you have left the base camp to your hide, you're supposed to stay as quiet as possible, not to spook the wildlife. Once at the hide, settle in quickly, get your stuff in order and your camera ready, and then quiet down for the night. The hides come in all shapes and sizes. Here's one that I spent a night at. There's a bunk bed, a bucket as a bathroom, there's usually a lookout window where you can see what's going on around you, and this is where you stick your camera through. Here's another hide from the outside. This one has a sort of a hallway made out of tarp in which there's some random stuff and then on the other side there is your restroom. And then you open the door to the actual hide and this is what it looks like inside.
Okay, so you've made it to the hide. Now first things first, set up your camera gear because you never know what's going to happen. So let's go through what you need camera gear wise. You're going to need to bring your own tripod head that you are going to attach to the little table plank at the hide. So you can attach your camera to your tripod head and have its lens sticking out the hide. The hides usually come with a couple of screws so you can attach your tripod head to the plank. There's usually a couple of extra pieces and trinkets as well to help you attach your tripod head to the plank or make it more secure or adjust the height of it. Some places also rent these tripod heads if you don't have your own. They also rent camera gear and lenses. Once you've attached your tripod head to the correct spot, it's time to stick your lens through. It's always a good idea to attach your lens hood to your lens to protect the front element of your lens from the elements once it's outside the hide. It's also a very good idea to remove the lens cap, which is quite annoying if you still got it on and you've got everything set up and there's a bear in front of your hide. Getting your camera set up basically requires for you to stick your hands outside of the hide, which is why once you get your camera set up, it is not recommended that you touch it or remove it until the next morning when you're supposed to leave the hide. About camera gear in general, I think it's best to understand that we are dealing with wildlife. They come and they go as they please, and usually that happens when there's not the best amount of available light. The hides also are very varied in how the wildlife reacts and walks around them. In some places the wildlife might stay really far away, and in some places they might come really really close to the hide. It's also important to understand that you are going to be stuck in this hide for hours on end and these hides don't come with electricity. So bring extra batteries that are fully charged for your camera, bring memory cards and perhaps an extra power bank if you got one. So that being said, the best gear to bring is the gear that handles low light the best and that you know how to use when things happen quickly. So now that you've got your camera all ready to go, it's time to get comfortable. It's good to remember that these places do not come with an AC nor a heating system, and they can be very, very drafty and cold, as well as like a sauna during the summer. I want to be fully focused in viewing and shooting the wildlife, so I need to get comfy. The prom must go. Today it's very cold outside, so I'm putting on layers upon layers of merino wool. It's best to get warm and comfortable in the beginning because you are supposed to stay quiet and you're going to be seated and staying stationary for hours on end trying to nail that shot. The season starts in early spring when there's still snow in the ground and ends in late autumn when the bears head for their little nappy nap of hibernation. At some places you can have a little portable gas heater in your hide but it's really just best to come prepared for the season and all kinds of weather. And it's always best to get dressed before you get cold, not after. And while you're getting all comfy and settled, don't forget to keep an eye out. Things can happen very fast and the animals can appear out of nowhere and be gone in a second. Now that you've got your camera set up and you've gotten all comfy and arranged everything at an arm's reach so you don't need to move or make extra noise, the waiting begins. In responsibly operated commercial hides, there usually aren't animals just hanging out in large numbers in front of your hide. It's going to be a waiting game. You might see some wildlife, you might not. But you have to stay constantly vigilant, because when the wildlife does appear, it usually doesn't stay very long. The best situations and photo opportunities tend to happen in seconds, after which the moment is gone. So you wait, and you wait. And if you come around midsummers, you wait all night because the sun never sets. If you come in autumn or early spring, you might get a couple of hours of sleep. As soon as you close the hide door behind you, the staff starts hiding the food for the animals. 
There's a lot of variation between operators on how and what the animals are being fed, but in all of these places there is some feeding going on to get the animals to appear. At this location they only hide a few small pieces of meat. And then we wait. And we wait. It's a good idea to bring a thermos and some snacks with you for the wait. Because pretty much as soon as you get a warm cup of coffee in front of you, it's time to put it down and let it cool off because there's a bear. She found the food stash. Let's watch her munch on it a little bit. The non-human animals people generally come to these places to see and photograph are brown bears, wolverines and wolves. And like mentioned before, chances are you see no animals. But in general, bears are the easiest to see. Wolves are a very, very rare treat, and you would consider yourself very lucky if you saw a wolf at one of these places. And the amazing wolverine can happen pretty much any time, but there are some places that you are more likely to see wolverines. You can also see foxes, white-tailed eagles, and other birds of prey, as well as ravens and other birds. So far I've had animal encounters every time I've spent a night in the hide, but that's not always the case. Oh, here comes another bear. Shh, he's coming really close to the hide now. Okay, how cool was that? Such a beautiful little bear. The amount of daylight that you have to photograph depends so much on the season during which you choose to visit these hides. During midsummer the sun never sets, so you can basically shoot all night long. Early spring and late autumn it does get dark at night, but during the early spring when there's still snow on the ground, and especially if it's a moonlit night, you can pretty much shoot all through the night. Depending on the season and your chosen hide operator, you either stay in the hide for the entire night and leave in the morning, or you just go in during the afternoon and then leave around after it gets dark. I've experienced both and personally I like spending the night in the hide. There is still an opportunity to see something cool during the night. For example, one night I saw northern lights and there might still be wildlife in the morning. This was a situation that happened on my last night at this location. I really, really wish that my camera and myself were able to keep up, but things happened really fast and it was already quite dark outside. But what an amazing experience. Just watch. And then moments later, here they come again, like nothing just happened. As the darkness begins to fall, it's time to prepare for bed. Some of these hides do have sleeping bags and pillows. I like to bring my own sleeping bag to keep really, really warm. If it's cold outside, I like to wear some of my long merino underwear. 
And a good tip, if you're alone, sleep on the top bunk. And if you're with somebody, sleep on the top bunk. Because A, it's warmer up there and the mice won't bother you so much. This was one of the hides where they got in. <laughs> what a night. Oh well, this is a place where they feed animals and the mice surely enjoyed my carrots. Good morning. Other than the hectic mice action, I slept pretty good. And without leaving the warmth of my sleeping bag, I wormed my way to keep watch again. In my experience, during these couple of hours before you're allowed to leave the hide, not much really happens, but the light is usually gorgeous and something could happen. Maybe it happens if I make coffee? You're supposed to leave the hide in the morning at a set time so that everybody leaves their hides at the same time and you go back as a group. But here I am alone because everybody left before me. No bears though. Thank you so much for being here and watching my video. If you have any questions, please do write them down below or find me on Instagram at Yana Wood or on Facebook at Yana Wood Photo. Um, and if you're interested in going on any workshops with me, going to shoot these beautiful bears with a camera, of course, um, then do sign up to my email list. That is the surest way that I can reach you when I have put a workshop together. There's been a lot of requests, so I am planning on putting one together hopefully soon. And the email list is really the best way for me to reach you. I'll put the link to the email list um, where you can sign up in the comments below. So please do that. Thank you again.